Okay, I have the file open for the photo folio. And I just wanted to run through real quick what these pieces are. I did put a guide here that tells you what they are. So the white piece is for your photo mats. You're going to need to duplicate that for the number that you need. Now, this one is based off my initial folio, which is the green one you'll see in the video. The green one is just a basic. The rose print one, I went a little over the top and I did some different things with it. So these pieces are based on the green and then depending on what you want to do, you'll be able to go ahead and delete the unnecessary things here and then go ahead and decorate it and add your own embellishments to make it your very own. So let's first talk about the absolute necessary piece. That's going to be these ye yellow pieces. Now, of course, you can do them in any color you want. I just colored them in different colors so that um, it was easy to differentiate the pieces. <coughs> Excuse me. So the first thing we have on the top here is a piece that we're just going to fold in half. It's got the score line right down the middle. And then you have two of this piece. And let me send it up here to the front. So you can see this one has a score line here and then a set of double score lines. And there are two of those. Those are the pieces that you need to create the actual folio. Then the green one, I did a single card insert that I put in one of the pockets and I um, did photos on both sides. That is this piece that's five by seven. And then I did one that folds in half and that is this piece here. It's 10 by seven scored down the center. Now I also use this in the, um, the rose print one. It's just basically, it's a five by seven card base. The white are for photo mats or placeholders. So you could, if you were making something along the lines of the basic one and you were giving it as a gift, and you wanted to um, show folks where they would put their pictures, you could resize this to four by six if they were using, you know, if you were planning it to be used for four by six photos or three by five, whichever you want, and then cut one for each of the photos and then just um, glue it down in the book so that then you could write on it, um, use your Cricut, and have um, the text right in here, um, place your photo here, and that way they would know. And even if you want it to be a photo map for a 4x6, leave it at the 4.25x625, and then put that wording in the very center, have the Cricut write it on in um, with one of your pens, and that way they know that that's where the photos go. So then as we move on, we've got the pieces that are shades of pink. Now these are all going to be for your pretty papers. Um, it is going to be the decorative layers for the inside and the cover of the book. Now the cover of the book and one of the inside pages are larger than the other two. So this one is eight and a quarter by five and three quarters. This is eight and a quarter by five and a quarter. So you will notice this is two covers. This darker pink are the front cover, the back cover, and the inside cover, I believe. And then the other two will fit the other two pages. Then over here, we have the pieces that will go on where your pockets are. Now there is, there are three of one size, one that's smaller. And again, this is for the smaller page, the opposite of this. And then these two would be for your larger page. 
And then these two darker ones are for your flaps. Now, one of the things you also will notice is that I did use a corner rounder on some of my pieces. Um, you can use the, um, the shape to create a corner rounder in Design Space if you wish to do that. I just find it's easier to just go ahead with my um, corner round punch and round off the things that I want. And that way, if I change my mind once I get going, I don't have them already rounded. So that is the file. And when you go ahead and click on make it, um, you will see that, as I say, the guide no longer goes to, you don't have to do anything. It doesn't go to a mat. Um, this will all sort it out and the pink, the writing pieces will be gone for you. So we're going on a mat, 12 by 12 and continue. And so we have all of our mats and I don't think there were any here. Sometimes I will go ahead and move things around, but no, there aren't any here that need to be readjusted. So that goes through that whole section of, or this whole section of creating the folio. Once we have all of the pieces cut out for this folio, we're going to assemble the base structure first. So I have two pieces here that are scored exactly the same. And I did these out of 110 um, cardstock. I did the other one out of 65, and honestly, I might do them in the future out of the 65 pound because this just feels heavy. So we're gonna take them and we're gonna lay them out side by side so that they are the same, the folds fall in the same direction. Both of these flaps are actually gonna form a pocket. And what I'm gonna do is fold this down and then I'm going to glue this to the narrow flap on this to the right of the score lines. There's two sets of score lines there. You can use a liquid adhesive. A lot of them work just fine. Um, for the speed of the process, I'm just gonna go ahead and use my tape glider. Now I'm going to go ahead and line this up right along that score line, but not going over it because we want to be able to fold this up. So that's about right. Yep. Get this baby straight. Okay, just like that. So now we have this little flap thing going on. It still folds all up and it's got that nice crease for the edges and this will come over this way. So the next thing I need to do is to add this extra page. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to glue it here so that this all falls um, in that folded range so that there's room for the thickness. Now I kinda think I wanna make this a pocket. So in order to accomplish that, I'm gonna run adhesive along the narrow edges and then I'm gonna run it along that long edge that goes next to the score lines, like so. Now you wanna make sure that you have that on there nice so that it does um, stay in place as it gets used. So there is that. Give it a good rub down. Now, I'm going to make this into a pocket. Now here, I don't need to glue or put adhesive 
on the um, fold side. This will hold this just nicely. Got a little bit of tape off the edge. So let me roll that back. And then I'm going to just put this down. I want a little bit of a bubble there. It makes it nice to slide things in. So then we're gonna go back here and we also, we created that pocket here. Now, this will all fold up here. Then when you open it, we have this page with a pocket. We have a page here, page here, page here, another page with a pocket, a full page here, and then of course your back, which this seam will be covered by your, um, whatever you put on the back to decorate it. So let me go ahead and do some other work and then I'll be back to show you where we're at and we'll assemble the um, pretty layers to this. So for the final album, I used Velcro to close it. We open it up and there is a little quote on the tag here. Then in here, there's a little sentiment here. This is also Velcroed, has a photo on the back. These, this one has journaling. And then this one has a quote. And then we have the center tag. <laughs> there we go. That has a photo on each side. And a quote on the back. Then we go to the next page. And we have two photos here. Then in here we have a photo and a little booklet with a photo here. This is fastened with Velcro. And then we have this little pullout here with photos. And then we close it up and there is the back and it Velcro's back closed. Here I have the file open for the folio collection box. It should hold three or four, depending on how much um, additional things you put inside. Now I'm going to go ahead and I um, push that out a little bit so that we can see all of the pieces. This one's really not a lot of pieces. You have these two pieces, which will cut out of a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. I used craft board. Um, in the one, the rose one, I did a black craft board and then I did the um, pieces here in print and cut. So now we have the yellow pieces. The yellow pieces, if you wanted to completely wrap, so you'll see this lines up perfectly, to completely wrap the outside of your box. I did not. I, as I said, I use black craft and then these gray pieces, I use my uploaded paper and I did those as a print and cut so that I have the print on the outside. Now, real quick, how I do that, I'm going to go ahead and get these pieces out of my way and then I'm going to set these pieces. I'm going to group these. I wanted the print on the paper to line up. So I had to um, get the pieces lined up so I could lay it out that way on the paper. So I'm going to align bottom. So now those all are aligned at the bottom. Now in my upload file here are my papers and a bunch of other things. So I'm just going to grab this one, add it to canvas. And once it comes in, it's going to come in, um, turn to the side. So I want to rotate this 90 degrees. And then this is the, 
this is from the paper collection. It's not the actual paper I used for this. Now you'll see that this came in at about eight by eight. These pieces are bigger than that. So I need it to be about, I'm gonna say 10 inches wide. And so, because I flipped this, it's, it's the opposite. So it's gonna be 10. So here we go. I've got this one and I'm gonna duplicate it and I'm gonna plop it over here. All right, now I'm going to align bottom on those so that they are even so that we'll go along. Something I wanna point out, you'll see here in the layers panel, see this little um, triangle alert that is because this page as it sits is it will not print and cut it's nothing to worry about because we're not going to print and cut that whole piece of paper so now i have them even i have level i have the other pieces level so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to move that sheet of paper to the back i'm going to do this one the same way range send to the back now, I had these grouped so that I could get them um, level at the bottom, and I went ahead and ungrouped them. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the background. I'm going to press and hold my shift key, click on the one piece, and I'm going to click slice. Now I'm going to click on the large piece, send it to the back. Uh, it's already selected, so I'm just going to press my shift key and click on that second piece and click slice. Okay, now if I get a hold of that, I can delete it. And this gray one, I can also delete and I can delete this because now I have my pieces that I wanted. Same thing over here. I'm gonna select the sheet of paper. I'm gonna hold the shift. I'm going to select the piece I wanna cut out of it and slice gonna grab my sheet of paper and I'm gonna send it to the back so I can see my piece. It is already selected. I'm gonna hit the shift key and I'm gonna select the piece I wanna cut out of it. And again, I'm gonna slice it out. Now we'll go ahead and get a red of that piece of paper because I don't need it anymore. I don't need that little solid piece. And now if I was wrapping it, then obviously they would lay on the white, how I did it, or on the yellow, how I did it, it lays right over this, the base. Either way, it's gonna give you that eighth of an inch margin all the way around. And you can do this with any paper that you upload. This is paper, I bought the pad, and then I um, took a picture of it with my phone and I saved it to Design Space. I uploaded it as a print and cut image, and then I was able to go ahead and slice out the designs that I wanted. This was actually a six by six pad of paper, and it would not have been large enough, large enough obviously, to do this project. Um, so I was able to go ahead and enlarge it to make it tall enough to cut an eight and a quarter inch piece out of it. And now these will all automatically um, position themselves when you go ahead and click make it. These will set up for your print then cut and the rest of the pieces will be on their respective mats based on color. So here we are, and there are our printing cuts, the four pages of printing cut. And then we have the um, cover, and we have the base box. And as I said, I didn't even do the yellow. I just uh, deleted them off, or you can hide them if deleting them. Um, concerns you but the nice thing is is you can do anything on here as long as you have the file saved because now um, I can go back to my projects and it will be there without 
any changes. I'm going to click Customize. Do you wish to a project already exists with unsaved changes? Do you wish to save your previous project or replace it with a new? And I'm always going to just hit Replace. And that way nothing is saved. The other thing is when you... Um, let's just go back to the canvas here. You can see here, it's got that little asterisk. That means you have unsaved changes. So if you even click on new, it's going to ask you to want to save. And as I said, I made changes to this that I don't. So I just want to replace it. And if I go back to that project now, you will see that the printing cut, all of that is gone and everything is back the way that it was when I started. So I hope those tips help as well as um, getting an eye on how this file works. The next section will show you how to put these pieces together and I hope you have as much fun with this as I have. Thanks so much. Today we're going to assemble the box for the photo folios. And so we have it all cut out. Um, I did cut it out of black craft board. Uh, this is Cricut brand and I've had really good luck with it. I did cut out um, some embellishment layers. I may do a little bit more to it after the fact and I have glued those in place. And then you'll also see I have added some red line tape. So on this piece, which has the section that wraps around the back, on this tab, I have added red line tape. I like it. You can also use a wet glue with good adhesion for the structural things. Then, on the reverse side, I have adhesive on this tab and then adhesive down the outside edge of this tab. Now on the piece that has the section that wraps around the front, again on this tab I have tape. Now the opposite of the um, the other side, I have it along this long piece, the side piece, on the front and then when you turn it over again I have it on these the shorter ones which are the ones that run front to back this one side to side so now I'm going to go ahead and start to assemble this so I'm going to do this long seam first and I'm going to grab my tweezers here and get the backing off this tape it's just a nice, strong two-sided tape if you've never used the red line. And it's called that because the liner is red. Now with this, I'm gonna flip it around. You wanna get this lined up so that you're up to, but not over that score line. And I have pre-folded all of my score lines and I want this to line up really nice so it takes a second to fidget with it and to get it exactly where I want it right there now I'm going to go ahead and press that in place I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on it and now we have the start of the box so now I think I'm going to go ahead and do the bottom of the box. So the first step is going to be this part. The long side pieces are gonna get folded under. They do not meet side to side. They're only three inches and your box is four. The reason for that being is that if I made them long enough, it would not fit on a 12 by 12 piece of craft board. 
So we had to go with a three inch side. So this is the back. I'm gonna fold up the two sides. I want the adhesives to the inside so that once these meet where I want them, they will stick and I'm gonna square things up and I'm not gonna like it that way. Okay, we're gonna go a different route because I wanna make sure this is square. So I'm going to do the front before I do the bottom. So, all right, so the front is your short piece and we need to attach that to the side. So again, just like we did on the um, back, I want to line these up. I'm fussing a little bit because, of course, I took that off the other, the red line off there. But I want these to line up perfectly straight, and then I'm going to press them in place. And that's what I was fussing with. I didn't want the red line to stick. It did, but it'll be all right because it is quite strong. So we're gonna fold this side in, and I hope you can see this. And then I'm gonna fold this side in. See, I think it might be better this way. And I wanna get this good and square. And I'm gonna press that down. And then we'll put my other hand inside and rub it down really well. So now the last thing to do are these two flaps, the front and back. And I'm going to go ahead and peel the backing off the adhesive. And I'm just going to go ahead and fold that up, getting everything nice and square. I'm gonna flip it over and do exactly the same thing on this side. This is really such an easy to assemble box. Um, it cuts out quick and it works. It'll work really nice for these photos. I have another file that I did that holds um, embossing folders. It's the perfect size for embossing folders. And you will notice this almost meets there in the center. So there we have the box that will hold the folios. There is my first folio, goes inside. It's a nice fit and there's room for a few more. On the rose pattern folio, I used this gatefold pocket. And so I wanted to just quickly show you this file. You have the white piece here, which is the base. And then these are your decorative layers. So I cut this out in the white and then I used the rose print and I did a print and cut and used that for these pieces here, the yellow pieces. Then also on the inside, you have the pockets and these are the center and the two side pockets. And I did the same thing, cut them out of white and then I cut um, the decorative layer, which here is green. I did that in print and cut also. And lastly, the tags. Now the tags are kind of reversed. The um, base tag is the pink here. And I actually, you know what I'm gonna do because I don't want this to be confusing for you. So I'm going to change those to lavender and then I will go ahead and change the background to white just so it's less confusing here. So I want this to be white. This one I want white and this one I want white. So same thing here. I did these out of white and then this purpley piece I went ahead and did with 
the um, pattern paper print and cut. And it's really quite easy. Score lines are all in place. So here, all you're going to do is fold these back and then adhere it to the inside panels in their respective places. Same thing with this. Now, one of the things that you'll notice on the rose one that I did, I used my corner rounder again, and I rounded the corners. After I had the tabs folded in, I rounded the corners of the mat and before I applied it, the green layer, and then I rounded the corners of the pockets. So you'll notice that when you look at it in the video and the pictures. I also use my corner rounder to round off these corners here, this upper, the bottom, the upper and the bottom on the white as well as the mat. So that was the extent of what I changed. And then you can also, now I, I did, and you could as well, I cut a double set of these so that I had them on both the inside and the outside. So I cut two of this, two of this, two of this, and then I adhered them on the inside as well as the back side. And then I placed a photo on the outside and then a photo on both sides of this piece here. And then I did just um, little stamped sayings on these two. So I hope that helps and you get to use that file. It's, it's a fun file for even creating just a gatefold card. Remember, if you are going to change the size, just um, select all. What I usually do is I will select all and group it. Then I will go ahead and insert a shape. So if I wanted this to be, say, a... Um, I don't know what size it is at this point. Let me see, because I changed it. So I'm going to insert a shape. I'm going to get a square. And we're going to unlock this, and I'm going to change this to be five inches wide, and I want it to be seven inches high. And so this is pretty much already there. Um, Let's see, I'm going to arrange, set to the back. Sorry, the dogs are going crazy. Um, I have a new puppy, and he is now um, four months old, and I have a 10-year-old that, um, unfortunately, she does have cancer, but she doesn't know it yet. So, they're playing. Um, so, I'm going to stretch this. And let me send this to the back again and see. All right. So in order to get this to be five by seven, I've got to unlock the proportions on this. And then I'm just going to go ahead and move this up, 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 up like that. And now I have approximately a five by seven um, card that I can use. So I've used this many ways and many times. Um, it's a fun little um, thing to do because you can, you can add different things here. You can put little mini pictures. Um, you can stamp sayings. Um, I'm one of these on the one I did for the rose folio. I actually have a stamp that puts in lines for journaling. Of course, you can also um, use your Cricut to draw those lines on. So I hope you have fun with this file and get to do a few different things with it.